The 2023 Los Angeles Time Lapse Film Festival is sponsored by Eller Time Lapse, Epidemic Sound, and Philography. Here is a quick message from our sponsors before we start the ceremony. Have you ever had an epic shot in mind, but just couldn't get it, despite a camera bag full of gear? The Unleashed is the Swiss Army knife of camera accessories. It's tiny, but packed with features. Remote triggering for tripod shots and family photos, video recording even with multiple cameras, changing settings from our app without touching the camera, or direct in-camera geotagging using either your phone's location or a dedicated Bluetooth GPS. The Unleashed is also a full-featured time-lapse tool. It makes setting up any time-lapse a breeze, whether simple or requiring expert features like flexible intervals, minimized dark time or month-long durations. It even brings holy grail time-lapses within reach for everyone. During these day-to-night transition time-lapses, the Unleashed will automatically adjust exposure settings using one of several algorithms to choose from. We're not limited to bulb ramping, but can actually ramp the camera's shutter speed, aperture and ISO for daylight to Milky Way transitions. Hello everybody, uh, let me know if the sound works on your side. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the first Los Angeles Time Lapse Film Festival. Sorry for the little issue at the beginning of the stream, but here we are. And uh, yeah, welcome, welcome. I'm not here by myself. I have some amazing people here. Let me show you their faces. There you go, guys, you're alive now. <laughs> so maybe not everybody knows everybody. So let's do like a quick introduction. We have Katrine. If you want to introduce yourself. Hi everyone, my name is Katrine. I'm a South African living in Boise, Idaho. Um, I specialize or love to capture beautiful landscapes, but I've recently started getting into drone and hyperlapse photography. Awesome, thank you so much for being here. We also have Matthew. Hello, hello, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being uh, here as a viewer of the stream as well. We're almost at a hundred viewers, which is great. Uh, I'm a Belgian Australian living in London. Been doing time lapse and hyperlapse for about a decade now and yeah just stoked to be involved with this yeah yeah that would be definitely awesome to reach 100 people we are so close we also have one and only gunter hey gunter 
<laughs> yes, yeah. Guter Wegner. Um, I'm the inventor of LR Time Labs, the software that many time as photographers use. I'm really happy to see how this uh, festival evolved, and I'm really happy to see how time lapse evolved in the last like more than 12 years that I'm in this topic. And of course, personally, I'm so happy that nearly all artists that submitted films to the festival worked with my software. I mean, that's what else can I say? That's so no. awesome for me. First. Yeah, I mean, thank you so much for everything you've been doing for the, the time lapse community, like especially with our time lapse. So you changed the way we, we edit time lapses. So thank you so thank much you, for but, this. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But at the end, it's so great to see what people do with the tool. And uh, the tool would be nothing without people using it, right? It's true. Mm -hmm. It's true. Well, thanks for being here today. We also have three more people. We have Brian. Hey, Brian. Hey, guys. I'm Brian Uchak. Um, I'm co-founder of a time-lapse company. So here's our official company <laughs> shirt. Um, so we started that last year myself and Emmerich. Buy our um, merch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're happy to be here. And there's a lot of time lapse photographers around the world. So it's incredible to see the worldwide presence of um, this type of photography and all the talent around the world. So happy to be here and looking forward to this. Awesome. Well, thanks for being here today. We also have Jordan. Hey, Jordan, how are you? Hey, my name is Jordan Mathis. Uh, I'm a filmmaker based in Texas, and I work on commercial, corporate, documentary films, and I specialize in motion control. Um, I love time lapse. I have uh, it's been a lifelong passion for me, and uh, I I'm really happy to be here among all these other wonderful judges and all the people who submitted films. Just incredible work. Uh, watching them, discussing them with the jury was just was an absolute highlight for for uh, for me. So uh, let's get into it. Let's see some let's see some more. Hell yeah. Films. Hell yeah. We have some incredible films today to watch. And then we obviously have Justin. How are you, Justin? Hey, Emmerich. My name is Justin Tierney. I'm a time lapse photographer. Most of my work takes place in Japan. And it was really a, a pleasure to go through all the work that everyone submitted and I had a lot of fun watching them all. So I can't wait to see what, see a lot of them again. And like uh, talk about our favorite parts and what we enjoyed about it. Awesome. Well, thanks for being here, Justin. I don't know, guys, if you know, but we have pretty much like six different time zones right now. We have pretty much four time zones in the U.S., two time zones in... It's 5 p.m. for Matthew, as you can see. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's pretty incredible to be able to do this. You know, it's, it's the good side of the live stream and being, uh, you know, live with the world. All right, guys, so we're going to start. Well, let's, you know, let's get started. I'm going to show you the presentation right away. Welcome to the Los Angeles Time Lapse Film Festival Award Ceremony. Super excited. Uh, thanks to our amazing sponsors. You've probably seen the quick commercial at the beginning, LR Time Lapse. Thank you, Gunter, for sponsoring this first uh, festival. We also have Philography and Epidemic Sound that gave some amazing prizes. So thank you so much. So quick reminder, all the selected film that we have today, we have uh, Cityscape category, Under the Fog, Future is Bright, Leon Lumens, Time, Oslo in Motion, A Taste of Los Angeles, Diary of a Confinement, Manchester in Motion 2. We also have the landscape category with, sorry if I don't pronounce it pretty, like Cambrai Fiera, <laughs> that's how you say it. Ode to Norway, New Zealand, the North, Neon Waves, Atmos, Bali Time Slice, Seasons in the Alps, Magical Switzerland, La Palma, Bagen Time Blend, The Speed of Light, and finally we have a few in the Hyperlapse category. We have Explore Poland, Birmingham Commonwealth, and Future is Bright. All right, people, I think now it's time to, you know, announce the awards. And I'm not going to do it by myself, actually. The jury is going to help me for this. We're going to start with the third place for the Cityscape category. And I'm going to let, actually, Katrine, if you want to uh, announce the first one. Yes. Um, OK, so this was a really beautiful film. Um, I will uh, Actually, all these films were really awesome to watch. So uh, it was a pleasure. Um, but in third place for Cityscape, we have Yulray Colson with under the fog.
All right, congratulations, Ulrich. Under the Fox, third place Cityscape. What a beautiful movie. Uh, really, it's such a good tribute for nowhere. And um, I'm going to let the jury to see if they want to say something about this movie. What do you guys think about uh, this first movie we showed today? Like, I think it's wonderful. Uh, I really like the sense of place uh, the film gives. There's almost like a little bit of a story, especially under the fog, starting with all this beautiful shots of the fog and this wonderful drone shot that just kind of slides, yes. dips right beneath the fog. It's got this wonderful reveal. And then it's just back to back, beautiful shots of the city, beautiful shots of the sky, wonderful locations. Uh, technically, really well done. Yeah, I feel like fog is such a good... Go for it, get inside. Sorry. Uh, I, I definitely love the fog scene in the beginning where he kind of did the reveal shot. A lot of the hyperlapse uh, time lapses were amazing as well, and the color grading was done so well. I also really enjoyed the music that went with it. It was just really well put together, so well done. Yeah, yeah, it was such a beautiful movie. I feel like everything, any like fog related, clouds related. I know much you loves clouds. <laughs> It's it's such what do you mean? it's a dread it's a, such a oh yeah I didn't even see it it's such a great like time lapse subject and when you can mix it with a cityscape for me it's like it's the perfect combo yeah well done not much to uh to comment about that shot coming down through the fog and then revealing the little town underneath is I think every jury member commented on that when we did the review session uh, yeah just mm -hmm. wonderful film well done yeah. all right well it's good. Awesome. So let's switch to the next award. We're going to go to the third place for the landscape category. And this is going to be Matt. Matt actually is going to announce third place for the cityscape category. All right. All right. We have, uh, wait, did you say cityscape or landscape? Landscape, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because my notes say landscape. And <laughs> right. Uh, landscape, uh, when you see the film, I don't think you'd be surprised. Like, it's just an enormous amount of effort that goes into this kind of time-lapse film. Uh, there's a couple of standout shots for me in there that we can like, maybe talk about when the film's finished. But uh, very big congratulations to Bruno Gonzalez with Atmos.
All right, congratulations, Bruno, for this amazing film. Really, at most, such a beautiful movie. Let's see uh, what the jury wants to say about this beautiful creation of yours. Yeah, Bruno, well, well done. I think most of the viewers know how much driving uh, and traveling and <laughs> data goes into shooting storm photography because of the fast intervals and just the distance you have to cover. So yeah, very well done. A lovely compilation. I think I remember from when we were reviewing it before, uh, when we were like judging all the films, how it's there's like just nothing uh, to to comment on this. It's just wonderful, wonderful work. So yeah, big congratulations. Very well done. Yeah, yeah. Again, the clouds cl such a perfect time lapse subject. Does anyone want to say something else about this movie or? Yeah, like I love the uh, like the music was synced perfectly, and some of those shots with the uh, the stars and the storms were just amazing. So. Great job, Bruno, and congrats. Yeah, beautiful movie. Actually, Bruno is going to join us at the end for an amazing Q&A, so stay tuned until the end of this uh, ceremony. And make sure uh, the, 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 the stream is actually, you can play it in uh, 1440p, so make sure you can click on the little gear at the bottom and then change the quality so you can enjoy all those time-lapse movies with the full quality. All right. All right, guys, it's time to go to the next award. Uh, we're going to switch category again and go in the hyperlapse category. And I'm actually going to leave, uh, I'm going to let Gunter announce the third place for the hyperlapse category. Yeah, everyone that has ever done a hyperlapse knows how much effort it takes to make it well. And uh, this third place goes uh, to a film that is not only very well done hyperlapses, but also a very special editing technique that I haven't seen before in that way. So please, um, yeah, have a special welcome to Darren Round with Birmingham Commonwealth. City of a thousand rights, built on industry and artistry. Woman. I present to you, Birmingham. Congratulations, Darren. What a beautiful, first of all, tribute for your dad and high prolapse movie. Um, we really, really liked it. Let's see what uh, what's the jury wants to say about your creation. Do you have guys want to comment on the film or? I thought Gunther was going to go. Oh. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Does that work for you, Gunther? <laughs> 
I, I just said when I announced it that, that I really liked it. The, the editing style was quite unique. Uh, that's something special. And also, of course, the message that he did that for his dad. Yeah, yeah I just that's... love the color correction too. Like it was all the mix yeah. of, you know, red and orange and blue a little bit. I like that. It stands out and it really ties in with those like animated things at the start, which makes it a really interesting mix of, I guess, like almost a mixed media project. So yeah, big ups, wonderful tribute indeed. Yeah, congratulations, Darren. Uh, beautiful hyperlapse film. All right, guys, now we're getting closer from the first place. But first of all, we need to talk about the second places. <laughs> so let's go yeah. second place for we need the cityscape category. Um, wait, hold on. I'm yeah. lost. Yeah. Yeah, it is, right? right? Yeah. Third and, place. Uh... No, hold on. Wait, hold on. Did I? No, I think you're on. Jordan yeah, is yeah, doing. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, sorry. It's sorry. On me now. My uh, bad. My bad. Yeah. I was confused. So yes, yeah, second place <laughs> for the cityscape category, and I'm actually yeah, yeah. going to let Jordan announce it. My bad. Sorry. Yeah. This is a this is a, a really unique film. Uh, I liked it a lot. It's got good good pace, uh, beautiful visuals, nice like the landscape of a city maybe as one way you could describe it. Um, and I spent some time in the city for the first time this year, and I had a wonderful time there. So watching this definitely put me back there and this is time barcelona by jordi de temple detente detente y contempla el paso del tiempo cada instante es único en todo el universo y no se volverá a repetir. La luz, los colores, la vida y su incansable ritmo. Su música, su sentir, las calles y su gente. Todo cambia constantemente a nuestro alrededor y no somos conscientes. Contempla el paso del tiempo. Miramos atrás y sentimos nostalgia por aquello que teníamos y ya no tenemos. Por aquello que fuimos y ya no somos. Miramos adelante y sentimos angustia por aquello que quizás algún día llegaremos a ser o llegaremos a tener. El tiempo es la historia, es la memoria. Todos y cada uno de nuestros recuerdos esculpidos en una piedra inmensa. Todas las veces que hemos tocado el cielo y todas las que hemos caído. perdemos, acertamos y nos equivocamos, reímos y lloramos bajo un cielo que nos parece infinito y que no se para nunca. Lo que ayer era habitual, hoy ya no lo es.
nuestro tiempo acaba. Hay quien dice que continúa en algún rincón, escondido en el corazón de aquellos que nos siguen queriendo, donde las sombras de toda una vida ya no nos pueden hacer más daño. El tiempo es este preciso instante, infinito, estés donde estés. Detente, te decía. No, no te detengas nunca. Congratulations, Jordi, for this amazing movie. Really, um, I think what the jury loved, including myself, it's like the use of all the motion controls and the the entire like the number of different angles and composition you managed to capture, and also edit this in a way. You know, guys, you use a voiceover. Voiceover were accepted in this festival. It was a great way to tell the story, but you also sing the mm. story using the visual and the music and you edited this in a way that works perfectly like we didn't even see like how long is this five minutes long and we didn't even see those five minutes they looked like two minutes so really congratulations Jordi for for this amazing uh, piece of work piece of art does the jury want to say anything do you guys want to share some thoughts I, I definitely will say that you captured Barcelona so beautifully and it makes me want to go and visit uh the city I love all the architecture there it's so beautiful especially the interior shots that you got it was just really well done and the, the color grading was amazing as well and you really captured the day to night scenes really well as well so congratulations congratulations yes um Awesome work, awesome work. So, all right, I think it's time to go to the next award. Now, I'm not gonna mess it up this time. We have the second place for the landscape category, and I'm gonna actually let Brian, Brian announce who is the winner. Yep, so this uh, this category for a landscape, um, you know, like I love to travel, and this, this video makes me wanna travel to this location. The scenery, the northern lights, the lakes, the mountains is amazing, so. The second place for landscape goes to Ode to Norway by Jasper Nibelsiek. Congrats, Jasper.
Amazing film, Jasper, congratulations for being a second place in the landscape category. Um, just so you know, guys, you guys are watching a live stream right now, so the quality might be a little lower than the original film. There's a link in the description below for the official selection. You can actually watch the original film in full 4K, 8K, uh, whatever it is. So check the link in the description if you want to rewatch all those movies. And I'm going to let uh, the jury share their opinion about it. I find with this film, especially others also, uh, you really see how high the quality of time lapse can be if you watch it on a 4K monitor. It's really perfectly shot and edited. And of course, Norway is such a beautiful country. I've been there uh, many times already, shooting the Northern Lights, but also other topics. It's really beautiful. And uh, Jasper did an amazing work here. Yeah, such such a beautiful movie. Good tribute to Norway. Does anyone want to say something real quick or no? Yeah, no worries, really just flawless. So. Yeah. Oh, sorry. yeah, I mean it yeah. was absolutely beautiful. I loved all of the shots, the low angles, the color grading was also done really well. And the northern lights, oh my word, that was the way you captured that and even just capturing the beautiful landscape of Norway. I mean I love landscapes, so this was a really, really beautiful film. Well done. This was definitely one of our favorite movies and but you know northern lights are definitely on my bucket list when i can travel <laughs> and a and a shout you out to the sound effects it. editing as well a wonderful extra layer of quality for the viewer yeah sound really effects incredible. music is very important to you know beautify your entire time lapse videos it's it's important for this yeah awesome again yeah congratulations and then let's go to the next category the second place for the hyperlapse category. I'm actually going to let Justin announce that one. Okay, so the second place for the hyperlapse category is a film that has lots of very creative transitions in between shots. It has a voiceover and 
it gives really a great tour and promotion for a southern city in Poland called, I'm going to try to say, Bielsko Biała. And this is a film by Tomasz Wolczak, and it's called The Future is Bright. Every day is a new story. Though some stories might get dark, you must remember. Even when you feel weak and helpless. The darkness of night will soon be overcome by a new dawn. Light overtakes the shadows. comes to an end, ours is just beginning. Congratulations, Thomas. What a beautiful film. This is the first type of film we'd like to call flow motion. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to let the jury talk on this one. You guys want to say anything? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Just that's, wow. I think that's I the word, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when, when this file started coming out, I looked, looked into it and I'm just like, exactly. that is a lot of work. Yeah, Planning, Toma storyboarding, shooting, editing, just mental. Well, well done. It was uh, definitely, we can see a lot of editing work behind this. Thomas couldn't make it today, but he was kind enough to uh, do a quick interview to talk about it, this project. So stay all the way to the end for an amazing behind the scenes. Awesome. All right, guys. Yeah, that's, I think I think this uh, type of editing is just adds a whole additional layer of creativity. There's so much planning involved in, in all of that. And that's definitely a type of a film that you need to watch two times or three times just to see all the detail that that you put into this. So really amazing work. Yeah, like in the interview, Tomas will talk about how he watched better videos to learn how to do like this type of time lapse. And frame by frame. Yeah, that's incredible. So. Exactly. Looking yeah. forward to see the picture. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Okay. Now it's getting pretty exciting. We're getting into the first places for every single category. Uh, we're going to start with the first place cityscape, and I'm going to announce this one for, for once. It's a movie that is incredible first of all it's about la where i am so of course i love it but it goes above and beyond with editing and how creative one can be with time-lapse photography so of course it's kind of tricky there's a lot of you know after effects techniques and editing going behind it but you'll see that a lot of those time lapses are very simple time lapses but edited edited in a cr very creative way and this is why you know i'm pretty happy about this film to be here in the festival so the first place for the cityscape category goes to A Taste of Los Angeles by Peter Jablonotsky and Thomas Puxtiner.
amazing film, as you could see. Uh, I taste of Los Angeles. Beautiful. Like, there's just so many things to say about it on the editing, on the, the on the on the on the sound effects. On it's it's called a flow motion because you can see it flows. It almost looks like it's only a single shot. Um, and for someone living in LA, I can tell it's it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. But um, let's see what the jury want to say about this incredible film. Oh, we have an echo again, yeah, Catherine. Yeah. Could you please Sorry. mute? <laughs> okay. Sorry. Uh, I'll Sorry. jump in. Uh, this is just absolutely incredible as far as the, the work in post-production, just quality time lapse, um, good shot planning. You know, you're, you're just getting warped through the city of Los Angeles. It feels like you've got a good sense of a lot of the best places to shoot. I like the layering over the 110, how... You see the traffic slide up. You know your freeways. Layers of traffic. It, it's just, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. A lot of really, uh, a lot of fun layering. And nothing simple. Even the little cars replacing each other was like playful. Um, a lot of creativity. It's very clever. It's very clever editing. I mean, it's so much work to do normal time lapses already, but to put it together in that way, this is just a whole other level course i mean the same goes for the film that we saw before this is this is just the editing then that that really tells uh, the story then yeah exactly so that, i love how the uh it looks like the camera is like suspended on like a oh, elastic yeah. band or something everything's so like bouncy and fluid which is really hard to yeah. achieve to make that look natural i love that part along that uh, that uh, sequence where the where you saw the car on the bridge that was also amazing just uh, different cars all the time on different positions i mean uh, really cool yeah. i will say that the techniques like you said the post-production was really well put together and i'm sure it takes a lot of time to learn something like that and put it together and have the smooth transitions between each clip and make it seem so seamless it was just so creative and really well put together and i really enjoyed that film yeah and you can realize there's no music like i think you had to watch it twice to realize there's no music it's only like sound effects and it was well really done. really clever oh we lost yeah. we lost matthew apparently um oh, oh. he might be back in a in a little bit his battery <laughs> camera maybe. that's what it is live live yeah. streams uh but i guess we can keep going we're gonna have actually the first place but for the landscape category and i'm gonna let katrine announce that one so this was a really really beautiful film i'm sure it also took a lot of work to do this is something where you put in a um you put in a situation where you have to work really fast and find the right angles to get these types of shots and i'm sure the post-production behind this was also really difficult so Congratulations. If I do uh, butcher your name, I apologize. <laughs> um, in first place for landscape, we have Bruno Gonsalves with Cumbre Vieja. Um, what is it? Sorry, I lost. Fire from within, yes. Well done.
Okay, it's a double win today for Bruno. Congratulations, yeah, yeah, Volcano yeah. Time Lapse. That is nuts. Really, I've never seen this before. Um, but let's see what the jury want to say. You guys have any thoughts? I have been on a volcano and I've tried to shoot volcanoes before. It is such an overwhelming subject uh, and it is so fast moving and it's dangerous as well, you know, if you're in the wrong spot. So um, very well done. I think in a few days time this was captured. I'm not sure if that was, but just, yeah, an insane amount of shots made, great composition, some actual real life drama captured as well with house, houses or a house burning down. Um, just, yeah, a very, uh, very wonderful film for a first spot and a double win. Big congrats. Well done. Double win for Bruno. Actually, Bruno is going to join us at the end as well for a QA. and a And you want to, you're going to talk about his uh, film Atmos and this one with the volcano. So again, stay all the way to the end for some amazing behind the scenes. Do you guys want to add anything? Fantastic. Really, was... really great volcano oh, great. work. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it really is interesting. I like the night shots. I like the contrast. Um, I've shot a volcano once or twice, too, and it is, it definitely, you feel at all of the power of nature, which seems to me, I uh, run into like clouds, shooting storms, powerful nature, and then powerful volcanoes. Yeah, there was a little audio glitch right there, but yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. And again, Bruno, congratulations for a double win tonight. I mean, Chantra, did you want to 10 a.m. for me, but. Say uh, yes, I just want, I mean, exactly what Jordan was saying, like the contrast between the night shots with, you know, the lava and also the burning house. I was just quite, quite surreal. And I can only imagine being in that kind of environment it must be really harsh conditions. And then still being out there and standing and waiting for the time lapse to capture this moment. And then post-production, I'm sure was also, you know, quite a lot of work too. So really well done, put together. I, really enjoyed that congratulations yes exactly insane thank you so much guys uh let's switch to the last category for the last first place of this event it's going to be the first place for the hyperlapse category and it's going to be matt matt's going to be your turn to announce it how happy am i that i fixed my tech issue before this moment <laughs> fairly happy so to say um I think when you watch this film, you won't be surprised as to why this has first place. Um, I'm not going to spend too many words on it. We can talk about it later. But another big congrats to Thomas Walczak for his Explore Poland film.
Beautiful film, Thomas. Again, a double for Thomas today. Beautiful tribute to Pauline as well. Uh, stay until the end because Thomas, again, a, a quick interview explaining uh, uh, his project as well. It was a great mix of drone and time lapse and hyperlapse. And I think, Matt, you want to share something? Yeah, another big congrats, Thomas. It's, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, everyone's picking up their jaw from the floor right now. Uh, as <laughs> usual with your work, been a, been a big fan. Uh, and it's exciting to it's it's nice that you gave us a little spiel at the end of this uh this festival so everyone stay around to see his um his interview with some behind behind the scenes content which gives you a bit of insight into how these genius shots and, and sequences i guess are made because it's not just the one shot and then another one it is a continuous flow motion as we call it which takes just so much work and planning and time uh, across the board and i think one that stood out for everyone in the jury and probably hopefully in the audience as well is that the painter may or the draw the person making the illustrating the little boat on the lake uh, or on the river it's just yeah it's those things that really really set your work apart so very very well done a deserved double uh, congratulations for you for your two prizes yeah the creativity in this one was nuts crazy how much you can do do you guys want to yeah, add anything or hyperlapse is like difficult and like there's crowded you know like city streets that you shot in which is really tough and if there's places that you like i wouldn't even think to shoot a hyperlapse like in the caves like he made that look so perfect so that's um, like like an amazing shot so congrats so much yeah awesome and here we have we have uh, so many techniques coming together but all single techniques would be anything if not uh, the creativity of uh, the designer would put them together to make this beautiful film so so time lapse hyperlapse uh, slow motion how you want to call it just this all comes together and uh, builds a beautiful piece of art in my opinion yeah exactly exactly it's very uh, inspirational it, it definitely takes a lot of creativity and storyboard uh, you know telling to put this together like Matthew was saying the painting, you know, into the transition of the real life. That was just so creative. I absolutely love that. And then what Brian was also saying, doing a hyperlapse with a lot of people around and a full crowd of people, I'm sure that was very challenging on its own. So well done. It was such a great film. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Again, stay until the end for a quick behind the scenes of those two amazing projects with Tomas. Okay, guys, so we are done with the nine main awards, but the event is not done. We have more films to show you. We have three awards. We're going to have the jury award, the best storyline award, and the audience award. And also some honorable mentions, I think, that look amazing. So let's go actually to the jury award, and I'm going to let Gunter announce that one. Yeah, that was really difficult. The jury watched all the films and we had to decide for one that really stood out for us and after we saw all of those really technically perfectly done movies that we just showed um, the jury award is a little bit different because it really focuses on storytelling 
It was shot in one apartment only. And the story just catches the viewer. And I really hope you see, will uh, perceive that as we did. And yeah, that was the reason why we uh, awarded this to the jury award. I hope you guys like it as we did. <laughs> oh yeah, of course, of course, sorry. Um, it's uh, by Hillary Camps. It's called Diary of a Confinement. Beautiful film, Hillary. Hillary is going to be here actually at the end for a special Q&A. Uh, we wanted to invite him to ask a few questions about this project because, come on, this is so different from what we've seen so far. And it shows how creative, you know, one can be just in a single apartment. Um, of course, like he was kind of stuck inside the apartment, but still, uh, it was such a beautiful creation. And I think some of the jury members want to share something. Yeah, you guys want to? Yeah, I just um, very nice. Go first. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I will go. say, you know, especially during COVID, I'm sure it was very tough for a lot of people being stuck during lockdown. And to be able to come up with something like this was just really unique and creative. And it just, you know, it makes you realize that you don't always have to be traveling or going outside or being in all these crazy places to capture a time lapse. You can do it from home and, you know, have this creative aspect to it so i was that was a very unique story and i really enjoyed it well done yeah exactly anyone else wanna... i really i really liked um uh i really liked that the time lapse was just used as a storytelling tool in this 
uh, very, very essential to that, that feeling of time passing. I know a lot of people during like lockdown that it, this is part of the experience that I think everyone can relate to, to a certain extent, that feeling of being there, but it wasn't just dark. It was also, I liked the plants. I liked the light passing through the move. Somehow it still felt hopeful and interesting. Like we found beauty in moments uh, of those confinements. And it, there was something there that I think that it, it was so interesting when we were discussing this as the jury, everybody had some sort of connection to this where they liked it. And it wasn't just that it was like this technical aspect or this sunset. It was like, everyone goes, yeah, that's, that's a story told with time lapse. And that's part of what we were looking for, for this film festival was storytelling. So excellent work. And uh, it really resonated with the jury. 100%. It was very simple, yet very captivating story. And this is why it is actually the jury award. We, we all yeah. liked it in some way. I mean, for me, you know, like it shows the passion of a photographer, like that, that COVID pandemic was tough. I, I think I shot one time lapse from my apartment and I got bored. So, you know, <laughs> the, like the fact that someone could do this, like that you really love time lapse and that's what um, like resonated with us. And even the title diary confinement, like that title really is a good um, intro in, into what the story is about. So um, congrats. And like, we all love this is pretty much unanimous choice for the juries. Yeah. Yeah. When going through all the films, it's just really stood out. I think it's an idea that many of us have played with in the past. Like, let me capture the shadows in my flat or in my house or whatever. Uh, then to go and do it. And and I assume, or we assume, to then stay out of the room for, you know, 12 or 24 hours. And and then do that again and again and again. And it's, yeah, it's a, it's a really well executed concept. It shows dedication. It shows passion. And it was in an interesting time in, in, in our lives, you know, in this confinement era during the pandemic. So um, very, very well done. Very happy that this one, because this one, when I went through all the films, really stood out and um, yeah, well deserved. And it's really nice to see the audience in the chat uh, going off about this as well. So very good. <laughs> yeah, like you yeah. say, it's going to end up as a piece of history, you know, it's going to remember, reminds us of uh, the COVID time <laughs> in a kind of a very poetic way which is kind of kind of nice you know we went we all went through hard times and yet there is some you know beauty outside and inside <laughs> um awesome thank yeah, you I love so when there's, i'll go for it Justin. I, I was gonna say one thing yeah i just love when there's these kind of imposed constraints and then having to be creative in response to them and doing it so well like this and that's why i was really attracted to this one 100 percent. awesome thank you so much guys for sharing this Let's go to the next award. We have one for best storyline award. And actually it's gonna be Jordan. Jordan's gonna announce best storyline award. Yes, uh, this is a really interesting film. Uh, a lot of us enjoyed just the unique look, uh, the documentary aspect of this film. Um, this is uh, some, is really rare and not everybody sees every day. So this is called Neon Waves by Alex Nye. So enjoy. In early 2020, taken by surprise, by something that while barely visible under a microscope, produces effects clearly visible to the naked eye. I'm talking, of course, of dinoflagellates, who gathered here in their billions to form a massive red tide, plain enough now, but a wholly different sight at night. These lights are alive, bioluminescent. This blue glow, once thought a sailor's legend, is the product of millions of microbiotic organisms. When the waters they inhabit are disturbed, chemical compounds once dormant in their bodies, combine. The greater the disturbance, the greater the flash of light. Watch. From Los Angeles to Baja, Passers-by gather to witness this once-in-a-lifetime event. But while biotides this large occur just every two decades or so, to 
to this day, it's still not entirely understood by scientists. We don't even know why some species, and others not, evolve to glow. It's like lightning in the water, an oceanic aurora. Whatever we may come to know, as neon waves illuminate the rocks of an otherwise darkened sea, let us appreciate this natural phenomenon for what it is, pure, unadulterated magic. Amazing film, Alex. I think one of a kind. Uh, great story. It's a great example of how we can use time lapse photography to, you know, as kind of a documentary style in a way and explain something, educate people with the time lapse, which is amazing. And uh, let's see if the jury want to share something about this amazing film. Yeah, I think this is uh, also a good, ex uh, good example where you can see it's not the most perfect time-lapse sequences in this film, but still the story just catches the viewer and and you, you, you get a documentary about a unique uh, nature um, event. So uh, using time-lapse to document something, I mean, that's how you should use that tool. And so very well done in my opinion. Yeah, and exactly like the volcano, it's an event that happens like once every, I don't know, 10 years. So being able to catch it and going on location, catch it in so many different angles, is is pretty awesome in a way. Yeah, and also it shows that that voiceover narration is is a good uh, good tool to just tell your story and an easy tool at the end because it's much more difficult to tell a story without voice than with voice. Yeah, exactly. It's hard to tell a story with just visual, but eh, it, it depends. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I but, think. Uh... Yeah, go for it. Sorry. No, yeah, this film shows what we're going to touch on is uh, the diversity uh, or using time lapse as a technique to show something like, yes, you can shoot normal real real life or real speed video of these neon waves, but you don't see how they move or like how these, you know, biomasses move around on the coastline. Uh, we've seen, you know, storm photography. We've seen shadow play. We've seen like it's just another great example of how powerful time lapse photography is. It, as a creative outlet, as a storytelling medium, as a generally as a as a visual technique. So, yeah, very um, very great film. This was one of my favorites by far. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, guys. Anyone else want to add something? Are we good? All right, let's go to the last award. We have one for the audience award, and we ask you guys, the audience, what do you think was the best films from twenty one different films? And we have one clear winner, <laughs> and Brian is going to announce who it is. Yes, we got over 1,400 votes incredibly on this, and this video got near 40%, so close to half of those votes. And just like the jury, the audience also picked Dire Confinement by Hillary. So I think it's a tribute to the work and the passion of that photographer. So congrats, Hillary. <laughs> it's another double for Hillary. Mm -hmm. I think like both the jury and the audience mm -hmm. kind of, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah love this movie for so many different ways and this is why it deserved uh, those two awards today we're not going to play the film again if you want to watch it again there's a link in the description below um but yeah thank you so much guys thank you to everyone who voted you know to make this audience award and then we have three more movies we want to show you tonight this morning for me <laughs> some honorable mention i'm gonna let justin announce the first honorable mention Okay, right. So we have three honorable mentions, and the first one takes place in northern New Zealand on the North Island, and it's called New Zealand, the North, and it's by Lin Shao, or also known as Luca. And my favorite shot from this whole thing is these glowworms in, deep inside a cave that glue this kind of beautiful blue color, and I've never seen a time lapse of that before, so that really caught my eye. It gives me a little bit of Lord of the Rings vibe in a way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, let's play the movie and we can talk about it after.
Congratulation, Lynn, for this amazing film. Definitely makes me want to go to New Zealand. Uh, we apologize for all the, you know, kind of music cutting a little bit and the lags. It was a big file. It was probably from the stream, but like uh, Gunter said, check the link in the description below on the uh, official website. You can see all those films and watch it properly with the right quality. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really sorry to to see that that now we cannot showcase some of the films and the quality they are in reality because uh, it is amazing. Also, this New Zealand film it really shows how high the quality can be with time lapse, with perfect editing here, perfect uh, uh, subject selection. Also, uh, really well done. I yeah. remember talking about that film for a very long time when we were going through the. The, all the submissions yeah very high high quality yeah. stuff yeah I, some of the sharp it just like it's so sharp i feel like i could cut my eyes on some of those some of those shots it's a wonderful management of dynamic range technically looking into the sun shadows in the foreground uh you know really hard to do uh some of those shots and some of it is luck almost but uh you know a lot of preparation to get to those locations and uh just impressive work all around it's also the the only movie that is mixing like cityscape and landscape in a very in a great way like in a way where we barely could couldn't tell in what category we should actually put it because <laughs> it was yeah. it was a great way it was all about the north part of new zealand which is you know fantastic uh, it was a great mix of different types of time lapses for sure Anyone else want to add anything or? The reflections, I, that's what I, I just want to say. Oh, the yeah. reflection shots in the low angle with the still lakes. Oh my gosh, I love that. Especially with that that peak mountain. I'm not quite sure which mountain Mount that was. Mount Taranaki. Oh, that was so beautiful. It was Well, maybe it's not that, off. sorry. If I speak out of, out of line. I don't want to mess up the geography. Anyway, sorry, keep going. <laughs> Oh, no, yeah. I mean, that was it. It was the low reflection shots that just really were really eye-opening and beautiful. And it also just made me really want to travel and experience New Zealand because I've heard so much about it. And people, every time they go and visit, they always like, and New Zealand is the most beautiful place to go and visit. So it's on the bucket list for sure. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Lord of the Rings, so I have to go at some point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Uh, we're gonna have two more films, two honorable mention, and Justin, if you want to go ahead and add this, uh, announce the second one, go for it. All right, so our second honorable mention takes place in Bali, and it's called Bali Time Slice by Martin Janssen. And what I really like about this one is it, it makes extensive use of the time slice technique, and it's really fitting the way he used it because he's using shots of these sy symmetrical temples and pagodas and then he's using symmetrical patterns inside the time slice and they kind of mirror each other and it just makes sense aesthetically and logically so i really like it for that reason
All right, guys. Um, very original film by Martin in Indonesia. Congratulations. Uh, we have a lot of questions, <laughs> but uh, great work, great work. Let's see what the jury wants to to share. Yeah, very, very well done. I've done quite a few time slices uh, in the past. Uh, it's the interesting thing about them is it's such a niche thing that you kind of went overboard with it and made it into a whole new uh, thing. Like normally you use it as a detail, and this was just so much that it was quite cohesive. The the framing of everything, the the symmetry, the other different wavy shapes. The nice thing about this is you need, just like to master time-lapse photography, you need to master photography first. To do time-slice photography, you need to master holy grail time-lapses first. So it's this whole extra level of, of perfection that you need to achieve to have them go nice and smooth. Because if there's any flickering, that flickering doesn't show up for one frame. It shows up for every single slice in your frame and it just turns ugly. So very very well done a lot of work that went into it and yeah just a wonderful uh, set of locations as well yeah i would say um, that normally i would would say that for a time slice you need a reason to put that into a film if you just have a a normal film and then you just put a time slice i ask myself why but in this case he gave the time slice a reason because he put it everywhere and and he used his creativity to make that symmetrical patterns so that's, I think, why it really works out. Um, otherwise, I, I hope to see more of such films, but I don't hope to see more of time slides just put randomly in other films uh, with no reason. You know, that's a little bit like a color, color. Uh, how, how do you say it? When you just paint one color in a photo <laughs> and the rest Select is like a color. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, like you guys say, yeah, it, it's it's very creative, but it doesn't work for every single time lapse. I don't think it works well with clouds or trees, for example. But when there's very vibrant color colors in the sky, for example, this is, I think, in my opinion, where time slice works really well. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I think overall, you know, this or sorry, but um, like a tutorial, like we were talking, like the vertical. I've I've, I've done that, but I've never done stars or circles all or the other shapes yeah <laughs> and, so martin if you, yeah, if you I, can release a tutorial I think that, that those shapes awesome. were really well used too i, mm -hmm. I think that his compositions informed the shapes really well i like the spiral out of the like the top of the mountain and then yeah. the, all the monuments or you know it was just really interesting how uh how that was used in the film and i think that is what kept it interesting versus just you know slices or a spiral on a regular time lapse I think there was a conversation there. Uh, I kind of, uh, with the masking, it, it worked really well, I think. Yeah, exactly. If you want to watch it again, again, link in the description. And uh, actually, he has a second film. I think he has Time Slice, too, in the other film, right? Time Blame, or was it just... Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, yes. he, has, he has a second film that was selected. So again, link in the description below. We have one more film, and then we can go to the q and I'm going to let Justin again announce the last honorable mention. All right, the third and final honorable mention is takes place in Switzerland, and it's called Magical Switzerland by Andreas Koenig. And this has one of my, maybe my favorite single shots of the whole festival, which takes place at a minute and 25 seconds in. is a really long shot. It's maybe over 30 seconds of a uh, sunset over the mountains. And just the way it's framed and the way that the colors are captured with a little like a frozen ice in the center that's jiggling around. I really love that shot. It's super sharp and high quality. So congrats.
All right, guys. Thank you so much, Andreas. Amazing movies of Switzerland. Again, I want to visit Switzerland at some point. Uh, beautiful film. Let's see if the jury want to, you know, share some thoughts about this film. Yeah, what Justin said, that shot in the middle there where the, the Milky Way core comes over the mountain, reflections, the ice floating around. It's a very long shot. Technically, it's difficult to shoot. The color grading is perfect. Uh, yeah, just very, very well done. Yeah. Magical, you... one could say. Exactly. Yes. Magical. <laughs> uh, <that's you. laughs> All right, guys. Like, yeah, anyone else want to? Okay. Yeah, great work. Uh, again, uh, I, I said this about a couple of these landscape ones. It feels so sharp you could cut your eyes on it. The, some of these shots. I like the one with the cone towards the end. That interesting shape. We got wonderful play with like clouds and sun and light very difficult technically to pull all of these shots off um especially when you're in harsh environments uh you know that's another thing a lot of people don't think about is you're adventuring out there into the cold into these difficult situations you're not just going to hop in your car and get fast food after this like you're there for a long time and it's very difficult to do that and to focus and to nail your exposure and then post-processing just a lot of talent on display here today um very impressive and that is the reason why we wanted to show this film i think it was worth mm. it was worth it and again uh link in the description if you want to watch it in full 4k awesome guys it was the last film of the day but we have some amazing guests we have two guests and in one video remember thomas thomas who created the film uh two films and two awards future is bright and explore poland he couldn't make it today, but he was kind enough to actually record a quick interview to, you know, share a little bit of behind the scenes about the two flow motions. So, Eric. I'm Tomasz Walczak and I'm a filmmaker from Poland. I do time-lapse and hyperlapse photography. I fly drones, do hyperlapse with those as well. I fly FPV drones and I like to combine all those techniques in post using a flow motion technique. Both films were passion projects. Explore Poland was a crazy one-year project showing my whole country and was made for 100 years anniversary of regaining independence by Poland. Future is Bright was a pandemic project, however I didn't want it to be just about pandemic. I wanted it to have a universal message. The darkness of night will soon be overcome by a new dawn. Most of the times I plan, plan everything ahead. I like drawing very bad storyboards that only I understand, or for any kind of flow motion sequence, just uh, list the shots in specific order so I know which one connects to which and how I should start and finish each of them to make the transition. Today we're in Basel Castle and we're filming this little fiat. Hello! <laughs> Of course, sometimes I have to improvise if not everything goes as planned. Hey, hey, how are you? It's 5 a.m. We're picking up the crew and heading up to Warsaw. When you do a passion project without much budget, there usually are some compromises. For Explore Poland, we traveled a lot across the whole country and sometimes we simply couldn't afford waiting for better weather or getting there for the second time. So weather was our main enemy. It's 2 a.m. We're back home after 21 hours and 850 kilometers, kilometers and we need some sleep. Future is Bright is a film made in a city that I live in, so it was easier to get best weather for each shot. However, it was beginning of the pandemic, so the challenge was to make, make out the way of showing interesting time-lapse and hyperlapse presentation of the city without people. My time-lapse workflow starts probably as among most of the time-lapsers with LR time-lapse and Lightroom. 
and after that I grab a ProRes file into After Effects. Such complicated projects as those two films in the festival are created entirely in After Effects anyway. There is a lot of masking, tracking and adding motion blur. When I first saw Rob Whitworth's Barcelona Go video in 2014, I watched it frame by frame many times to get idea of how such transitions are made and then I needed to try it. You have to film a few videos to get the idea which transition works, which doesn't. With experience you'll be able to plan only those which work. I hope the community and demand for the shots will continue to grow. Now it's not such a boom as it was a few years back or as it is with FPV drones right now. If we as time lapsers will continuously improve, the hype for such films will still be there. The worst thing creator could do is keep doing the same things over and over. For me in the past years it was combining FPV drone shots with hyperlapses which I love doing. Such festivals as this one are also very beneficial to all time-lapse community so thank you guys for doing that. Uh, oh, my mic is off. Okay, thank you Thomas for sharing this quick behind the scenes. He couldn't make it but it's great to see how he actually created those two films. It was a very inspirational message. Uh, love it. Thank you Thomas. And you can see if I put the jury right here we have a new guest. Hey Bruno, how are you today? Hello. Hello to you all and to the to all the viewers. <laughs> so just to remind you, Bruno actually submitted and won two awards for the film Atmos. Atmos was all, all the clouds, uh, the storm, the supercells, and also the Com Combre Fiera, sorry for my accent, um, the, the volcano time lapse. So we have, of course, some questions we want to ask Bruno. And the first one, can you just briefly present yourself, who you are, what you do, where you come from? Yeah, for sure. Uh, first of all, um, I would like to thank uh, Emric and Brian for organizing this contest. It's it's amazing. It's uh, all what our uh, we time lapsers uh, want. Uh, I want to thank you all the jury uh, also for the awards for liking my videos, and I love all your, all of your your work. Um, congratulations to all the. the all the other participant, participants of the other videos, they are all amazing, amazing time lapse, amazing hyperlapses, very well done, G great work for all. Uh, about me, well, uh, my name is Bruno, uh, I am from Portugal, um, I live in Algarve in South Portugal, I am 45 years old, I am married, I have a 15 years old uh, son. Uh, and I am an environmental engineer uh, for my main work and time lapse and storm photography is uh, just an, an hobby and in the recent years a second part-time job that I starting to to make and more recently uh, I starting I started to also to organize uh, and being uh, a guide in storm chasing tours to Tornado Valley in USA so I went there the last year and I'm going there this, this next May. So it is a little bit of, of myself. Awesome. Yeah, Tornado Alley is definitely also on my bucket list. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, well, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's I'm amazing. sure, especially for time lapse and just photography yeah. in general. Um, well, thank you so much. Uh, now, yeah, we have a few questions for you today. Like, how did you get this inspiration to create those two films? Like, I mean, you say you go to the Tornado Alley pretty often and was at most and is it like only one season like all the the, the selected time lapses that you have is it only like one one time there or yeah, at most it... Atmos was captured all in 2019 uh year i went there for 10 days uh i went in a tour with michael binsky i, I suppose no you, way. Yeah, you all know him <laughs> Uh, well, of yeah, <laughs> I spent <laughs> 10 days with him shooting and uh, chasing storms and Atmos uh, was the, the result of those 10 days in Tornado Valley. I, wow. I love I loved storms uh, since I was a kid. Um, 
and I started to try to capture the bolts in 2009. And when I got my first bolt, I got addicted to this. It's a uh, passion. <laughs> and storms here in Portugal are nothing quite uh, the storms there in, in USA. So it led me to USA in 2015 for the first time. And then I, I have been there for four times now. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I think we all love this movie. Like all the, we love clouds, you know, as time lapse photographers. So. <laughs> I guess I guess it was like such a beautiful movie, and we also have a lot of question about Cambrai Cambrai Viera. Um, I think the question I have is like, did you fly there just to capture the volcano, or yeah. were you yes. about like were you there to show it? Like, how do you? No, I was here in Portugal when it be uh, started the the eruption. Um, it's my hidden passion. I love volcanoes since I was a kid, also. But see, we don't have volcanoes in Portugal and volcanoes are all all far away so I didn't even uh, think about going to a volcano so but with this uh, Cumbre Vrera it's near Portugal so when it started to erupt I began to think on going there um, and after a month I saw it wasn't that dangerous uh, the kind of eruption not that explosive so we it was a great opportunity to try to photograph and time lapse the the volcano in eruption. So I went there for three days, uh, just to do that. I think that you have really been at the right uh, right time at the right spot there because I mean that uh, that shot from the house burning down. I mean that's really one of a kind. I... Yeah, we got lucky. Not the people yeah. there, but uh, no. I got lucky yeah. because we went. I went there in October. It was in the peak of activity, so um, we we had the luck to see all that. Uh, it was an amazing uh, experience, uh, overwhelming experience. It's, I love storms, but a volcano in eruption is quite something. It's quite something. Yeah, most probably. I want to go to Iceland also. It's got uh, the volcanoes uh, also, but this was a unique uh, opportunity how bad was it for your equipment sorry how bad was it for your equipment well uh when i came to portugal i had to clean all the the cameras inside so uh it's a lot of ash but they they survived they survived okay i, have a... I was actually gonna ask how how were you able to keep your lens clean during the you know all the ash in the air and the capturing for so long not not easy task not the easy task um no I have to uh, keep cleaning the lens uh, constantly, uh, but with some careful because the the ashes are quite uh, rough that it can uh, make uh, scratches on the, the lens. So with the blower, always trying to keep the it uh, cleaner the, the most time. But I have a lot of um, dust spot cleaning in After Effects. <laughs> I've got yes, a, a volcano anecdote from a friend when we did a trip to Vanuatu. Speaking of this volcano ash that was on his lens, and he didn't realize how, as you say, sharp it is. And he took a lens cloth and tried to wipe it off. Not, and he looks not. at his lens, and he just frosted the whole front of his lens because it's literally minuscule shards of glass yes, that yeah. you rub on it. Mm. So, <laughs> if anyone that what is watching who's ever going to shoot a volcano, that is my main tip I can give you for that. <laughs> And don't, and don't scratch your eyes also it's yeah. not it's not good yeah. <laughs> awesome Thanks. amazing yeah amazing film like talking about like challenges like one of the questions i like to ask is what was the most challenging aspect of those two films like time lapsing supercells and potentially tornadoes is pretty dangerous so how did you yeah. work around the danger and everything like well, uh, as a photographer and time lapser, we have to be a little bit far away from the the supercells and the storms, just to to have all the structure and can capture uh, all of it. Um, but it's quite challenging because uh, storms don't stop; they are very quick. Uh, we have to keep going with it. We have. Um, First, we have to go to do a, a, a good forecast uh, for the storms and where are the, the spots there they co can potentially happen and choose the best spots. And when they start to, 
to happen, uh, well, we have to be in the, the safest spot of, possible, uh, mostly south of the storms, and try to keep up with the storms, uh, stop to 5-10 minutes just to, to, to make a time lapse and then go again and then do another time lapse uh, 5 or 10 kilometers in, uh, away. It's a very dynamic um, situation. We have uh, strong winds, we have rain, a uh, big hail, uh, lightning bolts falling where we don't know where they will happen. So it's uh, quite an uh, adrenaline uh, situation, uh, a non-stop situation. So it's not uh, easy. Uh, one difference for, 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 uh, for normal photography is we can't choose the, the foreground. Uh, it's where we stop. We try to fix the best, the best foreground and choose the best situation. But not always we have a, a good foreground to the the storm. So the subject always is the the storms and the the, the clouds. Uh, when we have luck, we have a windmill or a cactus or something. But uh, <laughs> that's not uh, the most that happens. Yeah, I've watched too many videos behind the scenes of those storm chasers, and I can imagine like the wind going like hundreds of kilometers per hour. Yeah. It's it's challenging it's for scary. sure for a time lapse photographer. I've got two two questions. Uh, are you sorry, Catherine? I don't know if you. Uh, yes, there is actually a question from the audience. Um, oh. Somebody wanted to know what kind of lenses you were using during these uh, for both of the films. What about the full gear? Maybe if you can like really quickly list some of the gear you used there. Uh, yeah, well, for Atmos, uh, back back in 2019, I used the uh, Nikon uh, D. Uh, 750 uh, and then uh, with the 24 to 120 millimeters lens and the wide angle uh, 16 to 28 millimeters uh, lens so we can keep up with the Super all the supercells uh, now i have a, a wider uh, 14 millimeters uh, lens to shoot it wider also um for the the cumbre vieja I, I had my new Nikon, the D850, and I used the 24 to 120 millimeters also, and I used a, a borrowed 500 millimeter lens, so I can go to there and go closer to the, the volcano uh, and shoot those uh, uh, closer uh, angles. It was a, a difficulty because the with the zoom lens, I don't have um, uh, a, a zoom lens support, so on 500 millimeters with some wind, it's uh, yeah, it's very really shaky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so I have many, many warp stabilizer in the <laughs> in the sequence. Many hours stabilizing it. It was a uh, was art, but that's my uh, my gear. All right. Um, take just one last quick because I'm interested yeah. with the storms and the volcano. Both, I assume you're like shooting on a one second interval. Because it's, yes. it's all very yeah. fast moving, yeah. Yeah, mostly one second interval. Uh, with the storms, with the yes, the volcano also. Uh, mostly one one second and sometimes two second interval, but uh, ninety five percent one second interval. Yeah. So awesome. a lot a lot of shots, a lot of shots. Well, thank you so much, Bruno, for everything. Um, thank you so much. Really, again, congratulations for those beautiful beautiful movies. Thank, well, well I, I thank you all. It's uh, I'm overwhelmed with uh, this experience. Uh, first place and third place. Third place. I. It's uh, over uh, overwhelmed. I, <laughs> amazing videos in competition. So I'm very glad. Thank all you right. all. Well, thanks for joining me. Then see you. See you later. Then. Thank you. Alright, all right, guys. We'll be back in less than a minute.
Oh, hi guys, we're just waiting for Hillary Air. It is Hillary is here for his movie. Oh, perfect. Let's get him set Hey, Larry. Can can you, you oh, your mic is off. Of course, there's always a. <laughs> you, I think you. Okay. Now there we go. Yeah, I know that. Perfect. Plot. Thank you, you for joining us. All right. <laughs> Welcome. Look at the plants. Look at the plants. That. There are some new ones. <laughs> <laughs> That's the set. Thank you so much for joining us for a quick live Q&A. Uh, yeah. We have, again, congratulations for your film today. It was award, no, jury award and Thank audience award. So I think everybody Thank loved it. Much. And <laughs> yeah, can you can you maybe briefly uh, present yourself, like who you are, what, what you do, where you live? Okay, uh, now I'm Eric Camps. I live in Madrid, but I'm from Menorca, uh, an island in the Mediterranean Sea. And I work as a cameraman in different TV shows in Spain, like uh, investigation, reality, uh, all kind of of TV shows. And then I I do that like time lapse when I can. In some projects, they they give me the opportunity to to do time lapse, and always I can to do time lapse. I love to do it because all the people it's like they don't they put the camera like recording and then pass forward no 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 a time lapse is another thing but it's difficult to uh really uh um, the the director of the tv show to understand this and and i love wow. to do time lapse. <laughs> i can do it <laughs> awesome thank you so much yeah we i think we all love this movie for so many different reasons and like it was during the lockdown, I guess. Um, but like, how, how did you get the inspiration of time lapsing your own apartment? Because when I, I woke up and I see the lights throwing the, the, the window, uh, the shadows, uh, it was, oh, I, I want to test one time lapse, how, how I see, no? And the, the first result, it was crazy. And I think, oh, what possibilities I have? It was like, yes, I have my department, no? but I only have two, two rooms, <laughs> I need more things, no? And I start with the, the plants and then I see what I see through the windows, no? Uh, the couch, the neighbors, no? The other buildings, and, and then, no? The, 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 TV, the antennas of the TV, no? And, and I start thinking what I can transmit. And it, it, it is the inspiration to start and then to build the, the puzzle. Uh, I don't know in English, the puzzle, no? the, the pieces of the time lapse. And this is the, my inspiration at uh, the first. Were you, Hilary, firstly, well done and congrats. Love the film, it stood Thank out for me so much. Were you, you were you surprised by the the results that you got or the feedback the amount of you know votes that you received and all that was or were you expecting that or like talk us through how that was for you <laughs> no no i'm very surprised because i, I didn't expect this because like, this this film i released it like one year ago and some like a project personal project that i made and now it's like it's exploding no it's oh, uh, a local a local press uh, a local newspaper my of my Iceland called me, the, the TV of my of Balearic Iceland called me like oh. now, no? But the film has one year, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but now it's uh, thank you to the to, to the festival, no? It's, but for very me, cool. it's like, a, I'm very grateful for this. It's all the, um, all, all the people, uh, I'm, I'm very grateful. Uh, for me, it was good, but for my girlfriend, <laughs> because she, 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 she couldn't pass through the, the living room, or she couldn't pass for the other room. It was, uh, can I use, can I pass? No, 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 don't, don't pass. <laughs> like, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, now, now you can pass. <laughs> I, I, I have to uh, 
let's say thanks to my girlfriend because uh, she has a lot of patience you know with this project <laughs> that's great that's a good story yeah talk us talk us through the intervals of, of some of the shots you say 10 minutes between shots oh no 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 because i have the uh, an internal intervalometer of the sony and it, the, the maximum was one minute yeah. and i have to erase erase photos pictures because it was like the the first one is like two uh two no 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 twelve thousand yeah. photos for the first one the first one this one when i start hey i lose the connection oh i know I can so, see that, yeah. yeah yes uh the first one is like twelve thousand photos because yeah. it was too crazy to, wow. to process all all the all the all the time lapse uh, the, the whole day uh, um, the the computer was working it was crazy but <laughs> the lockdown i have time <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah nice we have one quick question on the chat uh, did you know how much movement the plants would have before you actually capture them did you know what the plants were going to do exactly or the flowers no 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 <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> i don't have any idea i start and i have to say that a lot of some time lapse i have to um i can't i couldn't use it because the like the um, the flower i have the the, the picture is like the flower here but the flower it opens to to, to the other side oh. and i i can't i can use it you know uh, it was like a uh, surprise no, no? <laughs> i can use it i can't use it no i never know if uh, if the if it will work or not Awesome. Well, I think uh, if you guys have any more questions, thank you so much. I do have uh, one question. Go for it. I, I, I just want to know what type of gear did you use to capture this? What what camera? Gear. What? Yeah, camera. What's what, your equipment? What, what was your gear that you used for this film? Uh, uh, it was uh, eight. Mi I start with eight millimeters, but I, I used to to film skateboarding, and I used the, the eight millimeter lens to the first shots, like the. Um, the first one and the flower, the the plant that it's like a, um, that it like to fly, you no, know, the eight an eight millimeters uh -huh. oh, yeah. and the uh, six thousand five hundred. It's like a really, really normal camera. It's not, but then to, to the to the to the other to the other plants, I use the seven hundred by the uh, this one. Oh wow! The, okay, mo a small one. Interesting. Yes, but it's not a, a very professional. It's professional, yes, but it's not. It, it works. Best. It works. Gear doesn't matter. See, like you, you've so created amazing. I was, I was not expecting you to pull out a seventy-two hundred yeah. uh, inside the. Flat. Yeah, right there. <laughs> yeah. That's why it was pretty crazy. Well, yeah. thank you so much, and, Hilary. And thank I have you. to say to yeah. to say to say thank thank you to uh, to Kei Schumacher and his label to to share the, me to the, the sound because the sound gift uh, is from another artist and he gave me to this project. That's and a great song, to... yeah, great soundtrack. That's nice. And congratulations to all the people for the organization and uh, keep it going to time lapse for... <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, right. man. Take thank care. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry thank for my friends. English. Oh, well, it's all right. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Good. It's great. What I would like to, what I would like to add, oh no, he's already gone. Um, <laughs> he's in the chat. Sorry. I, I'm really grateful that uh, that he submitted this film. I mean, and uh, I think it's also an interest of learning. Maybe for the next years, should we have a festival like this, and for everyone who wants to participate, because I mean, we saw a lot of technically perfect done films here, and we saw a couple of films that told a story. And I think always we as time-lapse photographers, we, we, there is two aspects. The one is what we want to, to do or we want to show. And the other is what the audience want to see. And if you produce something, you, you always should think about the audience. And in this case, the jury award went to this film, uh, Diary of a Confinement, and the audience award also. So this storytelling is such a strong component uh, that should be added to much more films because time lapse is just one tool that that we use to to tell something. But it needs uh, if if someone watches 
a film that is not a time lapse freak like we are. He, he will not care if that images are time lapse, if that's uh, some real time film, slow motion, whatever. He will just care about what is he watching? Is this four minutes that he is watching, are they entertaining to him or are they boring? And the quality of the single shots, I mean, maybe 10 years ago, you could impress someone really just with the quality. But I think today, these are just all tools that we are using. We need to put them together and we need to see ourselves as filmmakers that want to entertain our audience. And that's something that I find very interesting to remember. And that's something that this jury award and the audience award showed us how important this aspect is. Yeah, that, that, that was a beautiful well said. message. Yeah. Well said. Perfect. Well said. It's the case in everything. Like even TV shows, films, like the, the scenario, the storyline is so important. And that's what makes people want to keep watching it. You know, it's like, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Well, guys, um, this is already the end of this ceremony. Do you guys want to share anything? I think Gunter already shared a beautiful message, but do you guys want to share anything else uh, before we leave? Just been an absolute pleasure. Blown away by the quality of the submissions, the amount of submissions. Uh, the the chat has been going off tonight and this morning, I guess, depending on where you are, which is <laughs> lovely. Great to see so many familiar names. It's a nice global time lapse community. We got. I like what Gunter just said about the storytelling thing, pushing ourselves to use time lapse and more as just a single technique to combine it with other things. And um, yeah, who's uh, in the chat? Let us know if you're excited for maybe uh, maybe next year's time lapse film festival. You know, maybe that's. Yeah. It. Let us know in the chat. Give it's it not. A, it's a not a maybe, push. man. It's not a maybe. It's <laughs> next year. Yeah. Yeah. We'll make it happen. Oh. Even bigger than this. Your basement <laughs> has just arrived in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Say a big thank you to Merrick because Merrick really has that vision, I think, uh, from three years ago. And that's, mm -hmm. I think, when we first talked about his idea. Mm -hmm. And he really kept pushing that and pushing that and really kept doing it and uh, realizing it. And so thank you, Merrick. That thank was you. Good, good job. Really. I was a bit slow, but I made it happen at the end of the day. So I'm pretty happy. <laughs> <Yeah, pretty> yeah. <laughs> you did it. Congratulations. Man. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. bringing everybody together and, and making this the reality to, to celebrate time lapse. Uh, I think that's why we're all here is to celebrate time lapse and how it's used as a storytelling tool like uh, Gunther got into there. I mean, just wonderful, wonderful to see all these films. You know, what I, I'm grateful to be on this jury. I think one thing that was definitely clear to all of us while we were judging these films is just how how exciting it is to just sit down and watch a bunch of wonderful films by talented people and uh and just to talk about that to each other and and then bring them to the audience to you guys watching and uh share what we loved about them and it, it was definitely i was honored to be a part of this and and also again thank you emmerich for putting this all together it was and thank no you you guys to jerry too like you made uh you know spend a lot of time watching all the movies but mm -hmm. you guys are awesome all right Perfect. well let all me right. uh, end cool. this live stream thank you all of you guys don't forget again watch all the selected films and the winners Hi. in the description below and then yeah i'll see you next year for the 2024 events bye bye can wait yeah. bye, bye. bye. this was the Lesseps film festival 2023 award ceremony thank you for watching and we'll see you next year Thank you.